I'm sure you uh, heard the news that they're not going to allow a nativity scene to be set up in Washington, D.C. this Christmas. They just couldn't find three wise men. So, <laughs> you know, there are many, many ways that we celebrate Christmas on many levels. There are the beautiful decorations. Some of those decorations begin to appear at Halloween, but nevertheless, there are decorations that begin to surface all around us. There's wonderful family traditions and rituals and customs and meals and celebrations. To me, one of the wonderful things about the Christmas season that really sets it apart, sets it apart is its music. There's no other time of the year where music pervades public consciousness from the profound and sacred to the most whimsical. And every culture, every language, every generation has added to the rich anthology of Christmas music. Just think of the beautiful hymns we heard right before Mass, gave a tasting of the glorious ways that the human mind has put into song this remarkable reality that Jesus Christ has been born into life. There are three songs that strike me this Christmas 2023. You know, the oldest, one of the oldest churches in the city of Dublin is a church called St. Mikan's. It's just north of the River Liffey that goes right through the heart of Dublin city. St. Mikan's, the original chapel, the foundation was laid in, 10, 000, in the year 10, 1095. And it was known for centuries as the Crusader Church. There's just this remarkable phenomenon. As you go way below the main altar, there's a crypt. And there's something about the atmosphere in that crypt that prevents uh, human bodies from decaying. And there are a number of the residents of the crypt that are uh, visible to you, and it's astonishing. One of them, the most famous, is a crusader. And on your way out, you can shake his hand and make a wish. So I checked that off my bucket list. I shook the hand of a crusader. The second most famous person in the history of this church was known for his work upstairs in the body of the church. Their most famous parishioner was George uh, Frederick Handel. And he performed there. He wrote and composed the Messiah. Many consider one of the most spectacular Christmas oratorials there are. It would debut in Dublin long before it premiered in, in London. And you know, the Europeans have such a reverence for the Messiah, the Hallelujah Chorus, that you just stand when it's sung. Nobody asks the congregation to stand. Nobody asks an audience to stand. People just stand in respect of this extraordinary hymn. In the first part of the Messiah, it tells the story of the prophecies, the genealogy of Jesus and his birth. And one of my favorite hymns in that first part is as the shepherds watched over their flock, the glory of the Lord shone upon them. It's amazing to think that the first proclamation of the birth of the Messiah was not made to the kings. There was no report made to the Sanhedrin or to the Pharisees. It was to the poorest of the poor. Other than being lepers, it didn't get much lower than being a shepherd. And that was the group the Lord God decided to announce the birth of his son. And this hymn always reminds us, reminds me, that the glory of the Lord is always shining in our lives. Even when it seems dark or fearful or uncertain, the glory of the Lord is not far away. And the darkest of nights could not prevent the light of Christ to be born. The glory of the Lord was upon them. You know, this is the 104th Christmas Eve celebrated at Our Lady of Perpetual Help Parish. 
And when we were preparing for our centennial four years ago, we came across some writings of our founding pastor, Father Martin Schmidt. And he described that first Christmas as tough. That unlike this winter, it was a brutal winter. And earlier in the day, there was a blanket of snow that covered everything. And he was wondering, how are people going to make it to Christmas Eve Mass? Because back then, people came to Mass on horseback or on a, in a carriage. Nevertheless, they were there. And there were many parishioners, uh, the first parishioners that came from Trier, Germany. And there were several parishioners that night that were celebrating their first Christmas away from home. And there was a tremendous sadness. People thinking of my family back home and will I ever see them again? And while Father Schmidt was German-American, he wasn't aware of this German and Austrian custom that after communion, people just sing Silent Night. And I love this song. One of the things I love about it is Silent Night was written by a Catholic priest, a pastor of a little tiny Austrian parish. There had been the Neapolitanic Wars, and just months before that Christmas, the war stopped. For years, there was the bombardment of bombs exploding and soldiers shooting, and now there was this glorious silence and the quiet of this gorgeous night, this beautiful forest overlooking this village. He was so captivated by it that he wrote the lyrics that we know today as Silent Night. And he gave them to the Russell Stern of his parish, the parish organist, and he put those lyrics to music. And quickly, it became the most cherished Christmas carol in Germany, Austria, Europe, and beyond. And, you know, there's such a veneration for Silent Night that in Germany and Austria, you never sing Silent Night until Christmas Eve. You'll never hear it playing in a mall. You, if you went to someone's house for a sing-along, verboten, silent night is sung on Christmas Eve, period, finito. And that night he was just captivated by that beautiful hymn. And they sang it in German first, and then to acknowledge their new country, they sang it in English. Silent night, holy night. We praise God for the holy nights in our life. We pray that we will sleep in heavenly peace, freed from the things that torment us or make us anxious or make us afraid. That beautiful hymn speaks of the power of the newborn Christ, bringing peace that the world had never known and a peace that we yearn to experience today. In 1943, Kim Gibbons and Walter Kemp wrote a song called I'll Be Home for Christmas. And this wonderful song was written for the soldiers that were fighting in World War II. They were so aware that, that one of the hardest times for those soldiers was to be away from their families at Christmas. And this song spoke of their yearning to come home, to come home again, and to be with their loved ones. To me, whenever I think of that song, you know, we all yearn to be home. You know, and home can mean many things. There could be the physical home that we were raised in or a home we're living in right now or the home we hope to live in sometime. But for many of us, it has nothing to do with a physical building. It has to do with that inner sense of being at peace, that all is well, that God is good, that life matters, that all around me is the possibilities of grace and hope. My prayer as we gather this Christmas Eve is that we will acknowledge that the glory of God is shining all around us, that we'll be aware that the Prince of Peace seeks to bring peace in your life and in my life, and we pray for peace in this troubled world so ripped apart by violence and division we pray that our spiritual life will continue to bring us to that place of home, that place of feeling settled and at peace with ourselves and with others. Don't let these Christmas days go by without thanking God for the faces in your life, 
for those people that help you have a sense that you are home, that you will have a sense that God is shining his love on you and calling you to hope and a new way of being. May this Christmas be indeed a blessing for all of us. May the music and the songs we sing speak to our hearts. Help us to feel the power of Emmanuel, God with us. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Yes. Thank you.